So all this comes from this right here. Honoring the son above the father. It came from Israel and now it is seen in Christianity. Today we're going to deal with the common error. And when I say common error, I'm not talking about common error as a time frame, but I'm talking about the common error. E R R O R. We're going to deal with the common era. First off, let's deal with our dating system, okay? We date everything around the so-called most important time in history, which is considered the birth of Christ. Now, we take nothing from him. We know that he is Messiah, okay? When we look at our dating system, it's either B.C. or A.D. So counting around the time of the birth of Christ or after the birth of Christ, not after the death of Christ, because even our timeline knows he didn't die. BCE and CE were non-religious terms used to replace BC and AD because we know for a fact he did not die. He didn't die. And I like to call it BCE, meaning before common error, because this is the error that has deceived the whole world that Jesus is God. Not error as in E-R-A, but error as in E-R-R-O-R. -R -R. This is before common error, and C-E meaning common error. The whole world has been guilty of calling his creation God. Now, I want to deal with this. I've been going through this in my exhortation December 17th exhortation was along these lines. The Bible says, honor thy mother and thy father, that thy days may be long upon the earth. This is also seen in Deuteronomy 5.16. There is no scripture in the Bible that tells us to honor our son. We are supposed to honor the father and the mother. Now, we know your boy Paul brought these authorities in the church that needs to have double honor and bishops and things like that. But I want to stay with what the Most High said. The Most High set up authority. And his authority was for us to honor our father and mother. But something happened all across the world where we are honoring the son above the father. Now, let's get that in scripture. Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 21 and let's deal with this thing. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 21 verse 17, but he shall acknowledge the son of the hated. So first off, you got to understand that the nation of Israel was already established on not honoring the rights of the firstborn son. Ishmael was the firstborn son. Esau was the firstborn son. And we see that their rights were not honored. Going on down to verse 18, where I want to get at, if a man have a stubborn and rebellious son, which shall not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mother, and that when they have chastened him, will not hearken unto them, then shall his father and his mother lay hold on him, snatch him up and bring him out unto the elders of his city and unto the gate of his place and they shall say unto the elders of his city this our son is stubborn and rebellious he will not obey our voice he is a glutton and a drunkard and all the men of his city shall stone him with stones that he die so shalt thou put evil away from among you and all israel shall hear 
and fear. So according to the law of Moses, the children of Israel were commanded, preferably the parents, to put away evil from among them. And that even includes their precious dear born son. We seen an issue with this in 1 Samuel 2.29 when Eli's sons were causing the children of Israel's sacrifice to be aboard in Israel. They were laying with the temple prostitutes and they were taking bribes. Not only that, they were fat, they were overeaters, and they were eating meat raw. They were eating meat with blood in it. This is speaking of a bloody religion. Think about it. In the nation of Christianity, I call it the nation of Esau, okay? Because they are worshiping Esau. They are eating blood. They are drinking blood every week. What is that called? Communion. Now, we have a story of David. When the men risked their lives to go and get him water, they put their lives on a line to get him water. Three of his mighty men. And because they had risked their lives, he said, I'm not going to drink this water. I'm going to pour it out. Because drinking this water is like drinking the blood of these men. So he would not drink it. Now think about y'all in Christianity. Drinking the blood of Jesus as a type and a figure of his blood taking away your sins. When the Bible says in the new covenant, every man is going to be accountable for his own sins. Christianity is a bloody religion. It is all about the blood of Jesus. Going on, his sons had literally got to the point where God had to correct them through prophets. And he did not, speaking of Eli, did not receive correction. And God told him in 1 Samuel 2, 29, Wherefore kick ye at my sacrifice and at mine offering, which I have commanded in my habitation, and honorest thy sons above me. So the Most High was angered at Eli honoring his own sons above the most high. And you got to understand the Bible says in Malachi 3, 6, that the Lord changes not. So, you know, he has to be angered at you worshiping his creation more than the creator. Now, where do they get that from? They get that from Paul because the Bible says in Colossians that Jesus created all things. Now we know for a fact that is basically calling Jesus the creator. Now that is a total contradiction according to the Old Testament because in the Old Testament God is the creator. But something happened where now all of God's credit, all of his glory is being put upon his creation. So now we want to establish how God is not a man. Let's tip over this idol right here. This is going to be Numbers 23, 19. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. So we know that God is not a man. He's nothing like his creation. And God is not the son of man. And according to the gospels, Jesus is identified as the son of man by his own mouth. So let's tip. We tip that over. God is not a man. God is not the son of man. Let's go to another precept. First Samuel 15, 29. And also the strength of Israel will not lie nor repent for he is not a man. God is not a man. See, we are dealing with the common error, the common error that Jesus is God and everything is revolved around him. And those came in with letters from Paul and the forgery in John and also in some of the books of Matthew and Mark and Luke, because it says scripture such as before Abraham was I which is a total contradiction to the Bible. Now we want to deal with Elkanah. Elkanah had the right perspective. He told his wife in 1 Samuel 1.8, Then said Elkanah, her husband to her, Hannah, Why weepest thou, and why eatest thou not? 
And why is thy heart grieved? Am not I better to thee than ten sons? So the Most High is letting you know in this story, because we know that El, E-L in Elkanah, actually means God. He's literally saying, am I not better to you than 10 Jesuses? Am I not better to you than 10 sons? This is all in the same chapter where the children of Eli were being exalted above the Most High. And that's the same thing that's going on with Isa. Peace be upon him. He had nothing to do with this. Thing. These are what people have done. People have made a idol out of him. And he will declare on that day of judgment that when they called him Lord, 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 he will say, I never knew you. He will denounce them because they have associated him with the most high. Now, I want to keep going along these lines and I want to deal with how Mary was exalted. This is going to be in the book of Luke 146. And Mary said, my soul doth magnify the Lord. She is excited. Why? Because in Luke 128, an angel came to her and said, hell, thou that are highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women. Why was she exalted? Because the Bible says you are supposed to honor the mother and the father. Okay, father first. Both of them the same. Both of them equal. Both of them joint heirs. Both of them are authorities. We are supposed to honor the father and the mother over the children. So God seen that there would be a false balance, that Jesus would be top heavy, that he would be over honored above that which he is. So God had to make sure that Mary was honored as well. God is so merciful and he keeps his own word because he made that law. OK, to honor the father and the mother. And because he knew Jesus would be highly exalted, he had to make sure that Mary was exalted as well. So just like you have these statues of Jesus Christ everywhere. Look, God had to keep it balanced. Now you have these statues of Mary everywhere just as well. Not only that, this is the cause why there's other religions in the world. And these other religions are more honorable, such as Hinduism and Buddhism. All these things are more honorable. Why? Because it is not centered on sun worship. OK, God had to make sure everything was not all about his son. And he has no son speaking of his chosen or his creation. God is an awesome and he knows what we don't know. So God made sure Mary was exalted. Why? Because he knew that Jesus would be worshipped as a God when he is not God. Not only that, we have a messenger who comes on the scene. And he gives us the perfect balance that not only Jesus wasn't crucified, but he isn't God. All right. And he has a book that doesn't have a book named after him. He doesn't even have a book named after Jesus. He has a book named after Mary. OK, the grandmother of Jesus. So he honors the mother. He honors the mother. He brings the perfect balance and he puts the fulfillment of the law on honoring your father and honoring your mother. Now, why wasn't the father honored? I'll tell you why the father wasn't honored because Joseph was not the real dad. So there was no need to honor Joseph, but Mary, she was the real mom. So he had to honor Mary. Now, many of you don't understand when Jesus said he will glorify me. When Jesus said he would glorify me, he did just that because he didn't name no book after Jesus or himself, but he named the book after Mary, giving her the due honor and respect, which will fulfill the law.
Now, many of you have no clue because you don't read and you go by hearsay and don't study and do your own research. But here we have in the Bible this false balance. Like I told you, the beginning of the message, common error. This is the common error of people worshiping Jesus as God when he is not God. Our whole calendar system, the timeline, chronologically is all centered around the birth of Jesus. And that's why BCE and CE came in relatively new. Because they say, you know what? We're not going to center this around Jesus. We're going to center this around BCE, common era. Because this world is in error. Everything is in error. Everything is centered around the sun. Families is centered around the sun. Everything is centered around this because of the spirit that comes from Christianity. It is a false balance. Those who study and know the timeline and you know that things are all centered around the birth of Jesus, either before it or after it and never after his death. OK, because that would be wrong, because that would be like 33 years after his birth, making the timeline an error. So they make it BCE, meaning before common error or after his birth that's what it originates to to after his birth and that's a genius decision because it's an error anyway and he never died and that's why it is completely correct to literally say bce or ce because it's all a big error it's all a big error after his death has deceived so many people. And A.D. is only year of the Lord. It don't mean after his death anyway. But that has deceived many people. Just like the death of Christ has deceived many people. It's an error either way. Either way. And God is revealing. Okay. He is Letting us know through the Gentile messenger that Jesus never died anyway. Going on to the sun worship. Sun worship is everywhere. You see it in the families. You see how sons are honored above their own fathers. And this all came from Israel, Israel passed this along to Christianity the day they asked for a king. That is in 1 Samuel chapter 8. That's in 1 Samuel chapter 10. This also was starting in the beginning of the book of Samuel with the sons of Eli. Now, Jesus talked about honoring the father and the mother more than any other prophet. Micah in chapter 7 verse 6 reads, For the son dishonoreth the father, and the daughter rises up against her mother. And a man's enemies are the men of his own house. So it is true with the kingdom. The worst enemy to the father is son worship. It is the hatred that God has for Esau. When the Bible says God loved Jacob, but Esau have he hated. Now, this spirit is all in Christianity. Jesus constantly kept saying, honor your father, honor your mother. Then he actually said, whoever doesn't hate his father or his mother or his children cannot be my disciple. Jesus was very monotheistic. He put all the glory and the honor on the father. But what happened? The proud have forged a lie against him. And he said he would keep thy precepts with his whole heart. So going on through the scriptures, we see that Jesus was constantly reminding his disciples to honor 
their mother, honor their father. This was the royal law that has never changed. You don't see anything about keeping the Sabbath in the New Testament. You don't even hear that law being brought out. But you constantly hear this law right here. Honor your father and honor your mother constantly being brought out. Even by Paul, he said it in Ephesians 6 2. Honor thy father and mother. We see this in the book of Tobit 10 12. And he said to his daughter, Honor thy father and thy mother. This is in the word. God is so wise. In his dealings with mankind, that he made sure that Mary was exalted because he knew that his son or his chosen or his servant, because we are all servants and God has many sons, if you want to say it that way, but he has no literal sons. And we all commanded to honor the most high. Jesus said it like this. Love God, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. Now, that is the law. What has happened? The total opposite. Nowadays, all over the world, besides the monotheistic religions, and I have to give credit where credit is due. Even in Israel today, they do not honor the son above the father. They are a monotheistic religion, although they are off and they don't receive the Messiah just as yet, but they do not honor the son above the father. They honor the father just as well as in Islam. They honor the father. They don't honor no sons. Okay. And all these other religions, they don't honor no sons. The only religions that honor the sons are Mormonism, which is a branch of Christianity and Christianity as a whole and Israelite camps, you included. Israelite camps, they honor the sun more than any other religion on the planet. Okay? And I believe this is going to bring the wrath of God because even Paul said that the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against those who suppress the truth in unrighteousness and they honor the creation more than the creator. So we see that. This common error all comes from the nation of Israel. I encourage you all to repent and stop honoring the son above the father. Elkanah said, am I not better to you than 10 sons? My question to you today is not the father greater than a hundred sons, greater than a thousand sons, greater than a million sons. Greater than a billion sons. He is the almighty God. And besides him, there is no other. I know no God beside him. Repent and honor the father with your whole heart and with your whole mind and with your whole strength. Shalom, Israel.